why use a ported enclosure? Well, a ported enclosure makes use of the uh, wasted energy that normally comes off the back of your driver and enhances the output of the overall system, therefore making it more efficient as a whole. Uh, there are some drawbacks, of course. Um, with a port, you could potentially introduce port noise because the uh, air moving in and out of that port uh, in contact with the surface area of the port itself creates noise. We call this chuffing. And a well-designed box will minimize the effect of the chuffing. And making the port a little larger and a little longer will allow uh, the bass notes to be lower with less air velocity, therefore less chuffing. Also making the port area the surface that it's actually encompassing smaller decreases the chuffing as well. That's why round ports are absolutely the best ports. Uh, you can design around a square port uh, in most cases. You can put a square port or a rectangular port in a system if it's well designed and if they've taken into account the velocity of the air moving through there, you can make it work just fine. But if you're having trouble with that problem, as in you've got a limited amount of uh, enclosure volume for the port to fit inside of and whatnot. Sometimes using a tube or a round port, especially a flared round port, can get you a lot better results because you can have more air velocity with less port noise. The smaller surface area of a circle versus the amount of air it's able to move through it, that innately makes the port noise go down. Also, having the flare on the port will, it will decrease that noise of that air trying to move in and out of that uh, rigid squared off area at the end. All of these things reduce noise. When you reduce noise, then you can have a smaller overall port and still get that high output of bass. It's, it's a good compromise. All of these things add problems and fix problems at the same time. The longer the port is, in relation to its opening, the lower the tuning will be. The smaller the opening, the faster the air will move in and out of the port, increasing port noise. Something to keep in mind when you're designing your enclosure. Again, it's not simple. It's actually a lot of work to design a good port enclosure. As an example of a theoretical box with a ridiculous setup, a one inch port that is six inches long will have the same exact tune as a one foot port that's six feet long. Of course, that tiny little one inch port is going to make a lot of noise. It's going to sound like you're blowing across the top of a bottle. You're really hard. It's going to be horrendous. And of course, that six foot long one foot port is going to take up a lot of space in the trunk. And I don't know what the tuning would be on that. This is just an a, a, a example of how the relation of size versus length is important. Uh, whatever the, uh, whenever the opening gets bigger, the length must grow to keep the same tuning. And of course, the smaller the opening is, the more air velocity you have. Now, we're going to talk about something else in the same basic genre, the passive radiator. It's basically a mechanical port. Instead of a mass of air in the port, you have a mass of a cone covering a hole. So the same amount of energy that moves that mass of air back and forth and creates that secondary uh, wave of, of sound is now moving a mechanical a restrictive mechanical device back and forth. So you're getting the same response. In order to tune that radiator, you just add more mass to it. And by adding more mass to it, you make it want to resonate at a lower frequency. And of course, it doesn't resonate at higher frequencies because it's got too much mass. The same way you would do that with a port. In a port, you have more air mass versus the restriction and that creates an amount of resistance. So you can resonate that air volume. 
the good thing about a radiator though is it doesn't have any internal volume space restrictions so <clears throat> you can put uh, a passive radiator on the same uh, size enclosure that would normally be a ported enclosure without the port so it's not the same as a sealed enclosure necessarily so if you take your ported enclosures dimensions and you remove the port and you and you make the box size the box so that it is the same size internally as it would have been with the port but without the port section you know in there uh, then you add a passive radiator you get the same basic response <clears throat> the trick to a passive radiator is you need to have twice as much air displacement in the passive radiator as you do with the main driver you can get that basically one of two ways. You can have, say you've got a six inch subwoofer, right? You could use two six inch passive radiators. You could use a one foot passive radiator, or you could use a six inch passive radiator that has twice as much X max. You just need the passive radiator to be able to move twice as much air volume as the main driver, however you get there at least that's the that's the minimum you want it that or more uh, will allow the the passive radiator to play the frequencies you're wanting to play at the volumes that that subwoofer is capable of playing that's the key got to mix it up right or else you wind up with the radiator that runs out of gas before the subwoofer and you know a bunch of noise you can always have a bigger radiator than you need though there's no restrictions on that you can run three 12 inch radiators on one six inch sub it wouldn't really improve the overall output but it ain't gonna hurt anything either <coughs> basically these are the the nuts and bolts and and the things to consider whenever you're deciding between a port enclosure or a passive radiator enclosure once you understand the, the goods and bads of both, it helps you make a decision on which direction to go. Building a passive radiator enclosure is much simpler than building a ported enclosure. It also takes up less space in a vehicle, although not as small as a sealed enclosure. It does give you substantially more output than a sealed enclosure. You still run into the same problems with having a peaky base frequency response at certain areas because that's what the, the sealed that's what the port slash passive radiator does is enhance frequency response in a specific area. So whatever you end up doing there, you'll have to tune that with an, e, with an EQ or with a, uh, uh, a processor. So if you've got, you've got this extra low end that you didn't have before with the seal box, right? You've added this extra low end, but you've also added a big old peak right here. So you keep the low end, but you reduce that peak. So that now you have that extended low end frequency response and you just EQ down that peak so that it's nice and flat and you end up with an overall better system. Unless you're a base head, like a hardcore base head, like you're wanting to compete. Then you want to make that peak as much as you possibly can because you're just going to be playing that note for competitions. For most of the people that are listening to my channel, that's not your jam. You're an SQ guy. So the reason you add the port or the passive radiator is to get a lower response out of a smaller driver and a smaller enclosure, a smaller overall setup to get that response lower. And then you just EQ down the, uh, the hump that you create by doing that. And you get back to that nice flat response. Now, some of the downsides to that still even after all this correction I just explained, you still have a group delay, which is going to be a problem no matter what you run. And uh, some will argue that, or some have in the past argued that the group delay for a passive radiator is less. They think that the passive radiator is actually closer to a sealed enclosure. It's not. The actually a ported enclosure has less group delay. It is what it is. Uh, grip delay is essentially when your driver does its begins its note, it goes boom. It's going to end up doing this, right? 
as it begins that note, it pushes out, right? Then your passive radiator will go in. So they'll do this. And then as this note comes back down, the passive radiator comes up. And then they're doing this number, right? Well, at the point of tuning, they will actually be doing this number. But there is a delay between that happening. So you, when you end up with a base response that initiates here on the main driver, when this the, the radiator or the port catch up to that and start playing the same jam, there's a bit of a delay between that. And then also whenever this driver stops playing, the port or passive radiator will continue to do its thing for a little bit after that. That is a group delay. That what that causes is it causes a softening uh, of the overall sound uh, reproduction so kick drums and quick quick notes and things will have a little more softness they won't be quite as responsive which is why people run an sq tend to either run sealed or infinite baffle setups because then you can get more tight response